We are in part two of a lesson that we started on the Shabbat Lael. And people been saying this is the reason for the season. So this is the reason uh -huh. for the season that we're coming against. Yes. That they have Hallelujah. been putting out. The title of the lesson is December 25th. Worshiping the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. December 25th. Worshiping the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So what we saw in the first part of the show was that Yahweh named two trees in Genesis in the Garden of Eden. And he gave them spiritual names. All the other trees he did not name. And what happened was when man sinned, he got cut off from the tree of life, which represented Yeshua. And at the same time he got cut off from the tree of life, the devil hooked him up to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which represents him. And people have gotten into the practice of worshiping trees. So we are going to continue with the uh, lesson that we were looking at, where they have made trees into gods. And we were looking at this tree god named Dionysius. So let's start out in John, the second chapter. And we were looking at the fact that the devil has these lies circulating about this tree god, Dionysius. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same characteristics and facts about the life of the real Savior, Yeshua. Yeah. And it says that this article is from truthbeknown.com. And the title is Dionysus, born of a virgin on December 25th, killed and resurrected after three days. Huh. And it's by D.M. Murdoch and Akaria S. All right. It says, the Greek god of wine, Dionysus or Bacchus, also called Iacus, has been depicted as having been born of a virgin mother, Persis. Well, this the devil got it from the Bible. Right, right. Yes. On December 25th, and it says he performed miracles such as changing water to wine. He had 12 disciples. <clears throat> he was called by the names of Father and Savior. So the, the devil just went into the Bible right. and said, okay, this is what this tree God is like. And it was to try to confuse people and not believe that Yahweh had an actual son, Yahshua. Right, right. Mm -hmm. This this. A uh, tree god was supposed to have died and been resurrected after three days. He was supposed to have ascended back into heaven. Well, he couldn't ascend back there because he never came from there. All right. uh, he was supposed to be born of a virgin. And then they say, okay, he was born on December 25th, which is a lie. Okay. He was supposed to be son of the Heavenly Father. He was supposed to be, when he was born, placed in a crib or a manger. All right, so we understand if you've been reading the Bible, these are all facts. Right, right. About the life of Yahweh's son, Yahshua. Hallelujah. All right. So we're in John, the second chapter. And we're looking at this um, tree god, Bacchus, was supposed to be the god of the vine and turn water into wine. Uh -huh. John 2. And we're going to look at who actually did that. Let's right, start right. at verse 7. John Hallelujah. 2 and verse 7. Yahshua said unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. Verse 8. And he said unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. Verse 9. When the ruler of the feast had tested the water that was made wine, and he knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew the governor of the feast, called the bridegroom. Now he's calling the, <clears throat> the bridegroom because he's tasting the best wine right, that they right. ever had. Yes. So, but, but we're looking at, this was Yahshua that did this. Okay. See, in verse 7 said, Yahshua said unto them, put water in the water pots. Mm -hmm. They filled, and he said, now go take it to the governor of the feast and to the people at this marriage supper. Mm -hmm. This was the first miracle that Yahshua did. Right, right. All right, so now the governors tasted this and he called the bridegroom. He's going to ask him a question. All right, verse 10. And said unto him, Every man at the beginning thou set forth good wine. And when men have, have well drunk, then that which is worse 
but thou hast kept the good wine until now. All right, so when we were in the world, you put out the best liquor first, yeah. and then when people get drunk, right, then right. you put out the cheap stuff. But this, the governor said, hey, people at the beginning, they set forth the, the Tov Yain, when men have been, they done got intoxicated, and right, they can't right. tell the difference. Then he says, then they put out the worst right. wine. He said, you kept the best wine till now. Yes. All right, yes. and this is Yahshua that turned this water in right. wine. Verse 11. This beginning of miracles did Yahshua in Canaan of Galilee, mm -hmm. and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. So this was again the beginning of miracles for Yahshua, yeah, yeah. not for this pagan tree god. Oh, no. All right, they say this tree god Dionysius rode in a triumphal procession on a donkey. Uh -huh. Let's go to Matthew's 24th chapter. They say he rode on a donkey. Now, if he's a tree guy, <laughs> how's the tree going to ride on a donkey, right? <laughs> Matthew 21. Yeah. And when you don't know better, like we were talking before, it sounds good, but it doesn't bear out in reality. Matthew 21, and let's start at verse 4. Hallelujah. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying, Verse 5. Tell ye the daughter of, of Zion, mm -hmm. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon a donkey, and a coat, the fall of a donkey. So this is Yeshua that is talking about. Right, right. But it just shows you the length that the devil's going yeah. to, to try to get people not to believe in Yeshua, not to believe right, in right. the Bible. And to join him in the lake of fire. I said, he said, right? It says Dionysius was a sacred king. He was killed, and then there, he was eaten in a Eucharistic. Now you understand that's a Catholic word. <laughs> ritual for purification. <laughs> Matthew's twenty-six. He's talking about the bread and the wine. Matthew twenty-six. This tree guy was a sacred king. Matthew twenty-six. And he was killed, and now there's some symbolism that people do to remember him and to be purified. Matthew 26, let's read verse 26. Hallelujah. And as they were eating, Yeshua took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat this, is my body. 27. And he took the cup and, and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. Verse 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. All right. So they got this lie about the tree, God. Right, right. Here's Yahshua. He took the lechem, the bread, and barak or break it, uh -huh. and gave it to and blessed or break it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is mine, give it ya. Yeah, yeah. He took the cup and gave thanks and said, Drink ye. So he said, This is my blood, name of the Grash Barit, which is shared for the remission of Hata. Mm -hmm. Alright, it says that this tree god Dionysius traveled into the underworld <laughs> to rescue his loved ones arising. From the land of the dead after three days. All right, First Peter the third chapter. So he arose from the grave, and then this is a, a, a false Roman doctrine uh -huh. where they say Yeshua got up out of the grave and went and preached to the 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 ruachs of the spirits that were in prison, but they don't understand. It's talking about in spiritual terms. First Peter three. But they got this tree guy. When they saw that word Eucharistic, that was a big clue to you who was behind this, among others. 1 Peter 3, uh, let's read verse 18, please. Hallelujah. For Messiah also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to Elohim, being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the Spirit. Yes. Verse 19. By which also he went and preached unto the Spirit 
in prison. So this preaching up to the, to, the, to the Ruachs in prison is talking about what Yeshua did on the earth living a sinless life. Kind of like after uh, Abel died, his blood cried unto right, Yahweh right. from the ground. So Yeshua was preaching to the Ruachs in prison, whatever prison Satan has him in. Right, and right. Hey, this man lived a righteous life. He got back everything that the devil stole. Right. So now there's hope for you. Mm -hmm. And then it also condemned the spirits that followed the devil to the lake of fire because there was a person that could not succumb and that could live the sinner's yes. life uh, that Yahweh yeah. said could be done. Right. All right. As a man. All right. So this tree god Dionysius was supposed to have rose from the dead on March 25th and ascended into heaven. He was deemed the father, the liberator, and the savior. Let's go to 1 John, the fourth chapter. These are all Yeshua's titles. Yep, yep. 1 John 4. But the devil got him on a tree god and got people worshiping uh -huh. the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yep, yep. And which is him. Praise God. Yep. Praise the mighty God. deception. 1 yep. John 4. In one verse, verse 14. Hallelujah. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. That's Yahshua. That is not this tree God, Dionysius. All right? Dionysius, this tree God was said to be the only begotten Son. Go to regular John, the third chapter. They can give him all the titles That's they right. want. It, it doesn't matter. Yahweh left his word here to show us the way to separate right. from God. John 3. Yeah, regular John. They say this tree God was the only begotten son. Woo! John. J O H N 3. Mm -hmm. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Alright, John 3, let's read one verse. Verse 16, please. Hallelujah. For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes. Alright, this is talking about Yahshua. That's it. Alright, for Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Yahshua. Whosoever believeth in Yahshua should not perish but have everlasting life. Yep. This tree God was considered the king of kings, <laughs> the God of gods, the sin bearer, the redeemer, the anointed one. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Revelation, the 19th chapter. So the devil didn't stop at nothing, so nope. we shouldn't stop at anything. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Stand get, for get the word out. out. Get the truth out. Right. Come boldly. Revelation boldly. 19 and verse 16. Hallelujah. Crazy. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Soldier of Soldiers. All right. So this is Yahshua now. You read the chapter 19. Right, right. This is the truth. We're counteracting these lies. That's, it. That's our duty. Yahshua had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written. Uh-huh. Melek of Melek, or King of Kings, and Adon of Adons, or Master of Masters. Yes. They said this tree god had the name Alpha and Omega. Go to Revelation, the first chapter. It's laughable, but at the same time, people yeah. are deceived. Serious, serious, yeah. And you can see that every December 25th, yep. and it's so serious. Yep. And then some of them just have to go to the forest now. They just can't I have know, right? one of these commercial <laughs> trees that they created. Right. Uh, you know, manufactured. They got to have an eye tree. As it is written. Revelation, the first chapter. And we want to start at verse 10. Hallelujah. I was in the spirit on Yahweh's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Verse 11. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven assemblies, which are in Asia, unto Espus, and unto Samira, and unto 
Pegramos, and unto Thyra, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Locala. Laodicea. Laodicea. All right. This is Yachanan, and he said he was in the Ruach right, on right. Yahweh's Yam or day. Right, right. Then he heard a voice behind him as, as of a shofar. Yes. A strong voice. And it said, I am Aleph and Tall. Uh -huh. So you see Dionysius, the tree guy, is supposed to be Alpha and Omega. Sir. So you can tell, all right, some anglicized people. What we're going to find behind tree worship are the Europeans, all okay. right? The Japhethites, although before the Japhethites, there were some, some Hamites that started with the tree right, worship. Right, so and they then the Shemites, some of them joined in with right, tree worship. Right. But the last state of it, are the Japhethites with the tree worship. Right, right. He said that I am elephant tall, the first and the last. Well, this is what this tree guy is supposed to be. Uh -huh. All right? Alpha and Omega. All right? The tree guy was supposed to be identified as the ram or the lamb. Uh -huh. Go to John, the first chapter. We, we want to see who really is the know, ram right? and the lamb. John, the first chapter. Praise the mighty Yah. We need to know this because there are books our, out and there are, there, are, there are people that are doubting who Yahshua is right, right. because they've heard all this mess before. Uh -huh. See, we, we learned all the, the uh, false, the lies right, right. before we came to the truth yes. to find out what the truth was. So now we got to get rid of the lies That's right. and it's replace it with the truth. That's it. So we want to know, they said the tree god was identified with the ram or lamb. Now we want to know who actually was right, right. identified with the ram or lamb. Praise All right, John, the, the first God. chapter, and let's read one verse, verse 36. Hallelujah. And looking upon Yahshua as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of Yahweh. All right, so who was he looking at? He was looking at Yahshua. Right, right. This is Yachanah saying, Behold, the Lamb of Elohim or Yahweh. All right, right. Now, this tree guy got a name, the young man of the tree, which indicates he was hung on a tree and crucified. <laughs> Acts, the fifth chapter. You know, all you can do is shake your head I and, know, then, right? and tell the truth. Shout That's it from the it. house. Hallelujah. House. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Acts the fifth chapter. Stand on the truth. So this tree guy was supposed to have been hung on a tree and crucified. And well, it, tree, he must on have been tree. hanging on one of his brothers, ah, right? Right, right a tree on a tree. <laughs> Got a, a God who is the tree. He's yeah. hanging on another tree. <laughs> Acts 5 and verse 30. Hallelujah. The Elohim of our fathers raised up, Yahshua, whom you, ye slew and hang on a tree. All right, so that's Yahshua that right, got right. hung on a tree. Praise Yahweh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, December hallelujah. 25th is observing multiple pagan practices. Okay. We saw in the first show that 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 there's a bunch is, of pagan gods that they say yeah. that his birthday is December 25th. I know, right? Then we saw where the Roman Catholic Church actually decided and declared, okay, Yeshua's birthday, or Jesus, right. they say Jesus' birthday, right, right. Mm -hmm. is December 25th. That's when we're going to celebrate it. All right? Let's uh, go to Revelation, the 17th chapter. So, December 25th is surrounded with a bunch of pagan practices. Uh -huh. And one of them is not only the tree, but it's this white man that's associated with the tree. And you see that you have a, a handout, and you got a, a, a white man with a long white beard. Uh -huh. and you got a red suit. Right. And then you got some white people who got black faces. Right, right. They put the black face on like Al Joseph. Right, right. But actually now, according to their legend, this is Center Class. <laughs> S-I-N-T-E-R-K-L-A-A-S. He's a precursor of Santa Claus. Uh -huh. Why? Because all this stuff comes from Europe. Right, right. All right, from the Japhethites. That's where right. they settled in Europe. Right, right. All right. So now I have this article, and it's entitled "The Dutch Christmas Character," and you have your uh, 
picture. I, I didn't have an extra one for me, so I gave you the one with the picture. Okay. But you've seen him, and every year they have a parade where this white man with the white beard goes down the street, and then they got these black people, they black their faces, they're white people that black their faces. Uh -huh. And this is the tradition, European tradition that it comes from says Dutch Christmas character Black Pete to shed blackface for TV. Zawarti Piet, St. Nicholas's helper, will only have soot marks, says broadcaster NTR. The Dutch public broadcaster has announced that it will change the appearance of their traditional Christmas season character Black Pete. Yeah. Why? Because they, they say Black Pete was a Negro. <laughs> So who are they talking about, right? Yeah. It says, because his black face sparks annual controversy. Black Pete, extreme right appears to stroke Dutch divisions. So now where is, where are the Dutch? Are they in Holland? <coughs> is that the people who wear the wooden shoes? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Wooden heels? Yes. Okay, all right. Europeans, okay? Mm -hmm. NTR said the character of Zwarte Piet, the helper of St. Nicholas or Santa Claus, is known in Dutch, as he is known in Dutch, would this year only have such smudges on his face to represent, okay, he's really a Negro, okay, he's really black. Right. For his official arrival in November, so they start this in November with the parade. The NTR respects both tradition and change, but it is our public duty as an independent public broadcaster to reflect these changes in society. So I guess there's some black folks over there in Holland right. and saying, look, you need to stop this stuff. This uh, makes no sense. Mm. Therefore, the black peace this year will have soot on their hands and faces because they came through the chimney. <laughs> they will have different types of hair and will not be wearing golden earrings. So you see here, you got the golden earrings and the, mm -hmm. all right. Uh, black Pete's character is usually performed by an adult with a blacked up face wearing an Afro wig. All right, who, who got the kinky hair know, now? Right? Come on. Right, they're, they're mocking Shem. That's what all right? they are. Afro wig, earrings, gaudy costume, and red lips, a costume that has increasingly come under fire for being a racist stereotype. Critics say his Afro hair, black skin, red lips, and earrings are a reminder of the era when the Netherlands exploited slaves, yes. notably in Suriname. All right, so you, you have your picture. Let's, let's go and look at this. Uh, in Revelation 17 chapter. So the Roman Catholics dressed Santa Claus, uh -huh. who became Saint Nicholas in his red clothes. Okay. Revelation 17. <coughs> they moved the tradition to December 25th and they completed it with the Christmas tree and changed Santa Claus to Santa Claus. Okay. Revelation 17 and verse 3. Hallelujah. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet coral breast filled beast, beast. beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So in case people don't know what color scarlet is, what? Red. 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 All right. Yeah. He carried me, me away in the Ruach. This is Yahweh carrying Yachanan away in the Ruach right, so right. we can see these things. And I saw a woman sitting upon a, a red colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. So this this religious system, this December 25th, right, the right. worship of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that the devil has set up through one main religion that we saw last night. Yeah, we called it the mother of harlots okay. or whorish church systems, uh -huh. systems that are not according to what he said. That's right. It's supposed to be worship. And it's supposed to be directed at him in the Bible. But again, the devil always wanted to be worshipped. Yep. So now he's got this thing going in the earth. Right. And people are, they think, we were uh, talking last night about how they'll, they'll come up against you. They <laughs> are angry when you start telling yep. them about this. And, and they think, okay, well, there's no harm in it. But And, and some of them don't really want to know the truth. But Yahweh right. said it's up to us to just tell them. That's it. Whatever That's they do after that. 
it's off of our hands. That's right. All right. So here's this religious system that Yahweh is saying, hey, they're all dressed in red. And all you have to do is just look up, look at a picture of the Vatican Council, see what they got on. They're ready down. All right. Let's go to Revelation 19. Uh, so yeah. the presence. We're looking at Santa Claus. Right. You turn into Santa Claus. Yeah. The presence for the children are put through the chimney and under the tree by this Negro, <laughs> Black Pete. Santa Claus is a product of the old German or Teutonic religion. So the Germans again, Japhethites. Right, right. The German god Woden, also known as Odin, was the most important god of the German tribe. Woden, he was a multitude of gods. He was a god of wind, war, of the dead, of fertility. Uh -huh. That means he was a tree god. Uh -huh. Of wisdom and the sun. In their legends, he rides through the air on his faithful white horse, uh, clothed in a flowing robe. Uh, All right, so where did the devil get that? Let's I go know. to Revelation 19 and verse 11. So now you not only got Dionysius, now you got this other tree god. Mm -hmm. Now he's riding through the, the air on a white horse uh, with a flowing robe. Revelation okay. 19, verse 11. Hallelujah. And I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Yes. So you see, the devil is coming mm. against Yahshua. Right. He can't stand Yahshua. Uh -huh. He really can't. He wishes he was the son of Yahweh. Yeah, he does. It said, I saw Shemayim open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Imina and Emmet. That's talking about Yahshua. And right. Sadakah, he does Shaphat and make war. Yep, yep. Step down to verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dripped in blood, and his name is called the Word of Yahweh. All right, so this, this tree god, Woden, he's both riding through the air in a white horse, right. clothed with a, a long flowing robe. Here's Yahshua. Clothed with a vesture or a robe dipped in damn or blood. Right, right. Ishim is Kara, the Debar of Elohim, and that's from uh, Yah Yahshua. Right. All right. Let's go to Daniel, the seventh chapter. So now it says Woden, he's described as somebody with a long white beard. <laughs> now, how these, they can be in the tree and be the tree, <laughs> but then they're going to have these different characteristics. Riding horses and different things. But I know, right? Again, Deception. if you're going to no, tell a lie, I guess you might as well tell a big right. greasy lie. Because I didn't do it. I say a big white greasy lie because yeah. they, they put forth the lie, the, the lies that are big and greasy is yep. for black. You know, it's just the opposite. Daniel 7 and 1 verse, verse 9. Hallelujah. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool, his throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. So he's comparing this God with the Father. I know, right? Because it says his head and his hairs were like the pure wool. So the Father, yeah, we revealed to us that he's got a beard. That's all why right. he's telling men to wear beards. Right, right. And he's he got that woolly hair. All right? So it's the devil telling people Yahweh the Father has a white beard. Woden was said to be the God of wisdom. Uh -huh. And he held a book in his hand uh -huh. written in German letters which were mysterious <laughs> and magical poems. Let's go to Revelation, the fifth chapter. Woo. Yep, he's supposed to have a book in his hand. <laughs> Revelation, the fifth chapter. <laughs> Thank you, Yahweh. For yes, praise the truth. Yahweh. Yes. For, for taking the cover off. Yes. We're looking at the lie, and now we blowing it up with yes. This. I was watching that um, comedian. What's his name? Jeff uh, 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 Dunham. Yeah, yeah, Jeff Dunham, Dunham, mm -hmm. and he had that uh, that puppet. He's a what you call it? Ventriloquist. Ventriloquist. He had that puppet, uh, Ahmed or Ahmed. 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 
I, okay, and he got blown up because he's a suicide bomber, but he's like a little <laughs> skeleton. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so this is this is what we're doing now. Right. We're taking and blowing it up. You say, I kill you. So this yeah. is how we're killing the lies. Yeah, praise Yahweh. Revelation 5. Alright, so now this this Woden, who's supposed to be the God of wisdom, he got a book in his hand with mysterious stuff written on the book. Revelation 5 and verse 1. Where, where did the devil get that from? Alright. I know, right? And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. All right, so now on the right hand of him that sat on the throne, we just saw in Daniel who's sitting on the throne. Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, but Yahweh, yes. the Father. Yes. But so then the devil said, okay, this this pagan tree God, he got, he's, he's wisdom and he got a book uh -huh. in his hand. Mm -hmm. All right. So Woden was accompanied by the giant Noe. Now Noe, he had a black face because he was the father of the night. Huh. So you see how the, the Dutch, they like, and the Germans, yeah. they like to hook up where well, the white man is the master yeah. and you know, the black man is the, the, the slave. <laughs> so the devil is telling us Yahshua is black because this black giant Noe was well versed in making rhymes and poems. Skip down to the fourth verse of the fifth chapter. Hallelujah. And I weep much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Verse 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, have prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. All right, so Yach and I was crying because the father had this book in his hand and right. there was nobody that was able. And then the elder told him, oh, dang, don't cry. Uh -huh. He says, the lion of the tribe of Yahweh. He's talking about Yeshua. These yeah, are names yeah. for Yeshua. Yeah, yeah. This is not talking about Dionysius. This is not talking about Woden. This is not talking about any of the, the trees that the devil has set up to have people worship the knowledge of good and evil. It says, he prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. But remember now, this, this German, uh, the, the, the tree god that had the book and had mysterious poems and stuff written that nobody uh -huh. could break. Right. Well, here it is right here. He's letting you right. know, all right, this is the Father and this is Yahshua right, right. that he's talking about. So if people didn't believe, they can find out from mythology that what Yahweh is saying okay. is true. They can find out what the real truth is. All right, verse 6. And I beheld and knew in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts. And in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven <coughs> eyes, which are the seven spirits of Elohim sent forth into all the earth. Yes. Verse 7. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Alright, so here's Yeshua coming right, right. to take the book out of the right hand of the Father that's sitting on the throne. Right. Alright, so now we're going to read some of these articles and then we'll go back to scripture. So the white horse, the white robe, the big hat, the book, the spear, and the black Noe. Supposed to have, he's supposed to have a bunch of twigs and the poems traditions says we have so many parallels with today's Shemite rap music. Uh -huh. Says the European Santa Claus and Zwarte Peter or Black Peter. Hmm. So these are got the rap music coming up out of that with the poems and the you know I'm not coming against rap music right. per se, but this is where it stems from this tradition. All right, at the website mentalfloss.com. It says, why does Santa Claus come down the chimney? All right, this is by Jocelyn Sears. This is dated December 22nd, 2018. Santa Claus first slid down the chimney in, 18, in a 1812 book by Washington Irving. But the fireplace served as a venue for magical visitors long before Santa Claus. Okay. So again, we just telling you this has nothing to do, December 25th has nothing to do with right, that, right? Right. It has nothing to do with the tree of life. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with Yahshua. Nothing. It has nothing to do with truth. Nothing. 
He said, during the 15th century, the French scholar Petrus Mamoris became concerned about a widespread belief that witches could pass through solid objects like walls and closed doors in order to enter homes. Now, where did they get that from? I know, from? right? From the Bible. Right. Yeshua right? came and appeared to right. the disciples, so the devil just had not believed in all kind of superstitious stuff. Mm -hmm. It says, believing Christians were granting too much power to the occult. Uh -huh. These right. are Roman Christians now. Right. They're believing this stuff. Mamoris offered a practical explanation. Witches, elves, and the like simply entered via the chimney. <laughs> in Renaissance fairy tales, fairies appeared in chimneys, and during the same period, witches were said to fly up their chimneys on broomsticks to attend Sabbat meetings. Huh. They're talking about Sunday. Okay. Because they say Sunday is the yeah, Shabbat, yeah. which it is not. Throughout European folklore, the hearth and chimney acted as a space connecting the natural and supernatural worlds. According to legend, many supernatural creatures exploited this special space to enter homes for good and evil. Scottish and English legend featured the brownie, which was a household spirit that aided in domestic tasks, but only at night, and entered and exited via the chimney. In Slovenia, a shape-shifting fairy called the Scrat brought riches to human families who cultivated his favor, flying down the chimney in a fiery form when delivering money. <laughs> then the Celts, they got a nursery boogie called the Bodak, and he sneaks down the chimney and kidnaps children. Uh -huh. Some chimney-traveling spirits appeared specifically during the winter holidays. In Greece, <coughs> goblins slipped down the chimney to wreak havoc during the 12 days of Christmas. Italy said the Christmas witch delivered gifts the night before January 6th, leaving her present in shoes set by the fireplace. Is this ridiculous or what? I know, right? <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, Psalm 75. Uh, so Luke. Santa Claus. Santa Claus is from German and Dutch folklore. We just saw Santa Claus right, right. became Santa Claus. It originated in St. Nicholas, known as Nicholas of Myra in Lycia. It says he was popular in the Greek and Latin or Roman church, and miracles were attributed to him by tradition, and they have pagan origins and little or nothing to do with the original man. The traditions associated with his generosity caused French nuns to give to the poor on St. Nicholas Day or Eve. That's what that, December 24th, right, right. December 25th, right, right. or January 5th or January 6th. Right, right. This became their tradition behind Boxing Day on December 26th. His cult started <coughs> in Europe at the time of Otto II, whose wife was a Greek. He's honored as a patron saint in Greece, Russia, Sicily, and many cities in Italy and Germany, Austria and Belgium, the Netherlands, Switzerland, and Moscow and Russia. Who are you huh. talking about? Europeans. All right. He was a patron of mariners, merchants, bankers, and children. And in 1087, Italian merchants stole his body and Myra and took it to Barry. I guess maybe they started worshiping his body. Who knows? <laughs> says uh, one legend about St. Nicholas relates to the formation of three golden balls. And um, I would imagine that's why they have those gold okay. right, right. on the tree. It said they were made from his wages for one year and it was rolled through the window of a needy family for years and then it landed in the stocking called the Christmas <laughs> stocking. All right. And then in Germany, Christ's bundles were given to the poor. There's annual parades for the heavenly mother goddess. Uh -huh. All right. And then Nicholas Samira was a saint in the Roman Catholic Church okay. until 1969. And they say in Holland, children saved all year for the annual Christmas pig. This led to the creation of the piggy bank. Okay. All right. We okay. heard all kinds of piggy banks, right? right? So you see, European tradition. Mm -hmm. All right, in Psalm 75. So, they have the 12 days of Christmas. And you've seen 
the, they start doing stuff for 12 days. What right. is that? Something? Partridge, pear tree, something? All right. All right. Mm -hmm. The 12 days of Christmas is also called the Festival of Fools. Uh -huh. <laughs> the Festival of Fools goes on in France to the 12th day of Christmas. The 12th night is the night of January 6th. All right, Psalm 75. So this is what Yahweh says about the Festival of Fools. But most people don't know the 12th right. days of Christmas is the Festival of Fools. Okay. All right, 75 verse 4. Hallelujah. I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly, and to the wicked, lift not up the horn. All right, so don't lift that, that horn. We looked at that scripture where uh, this person that's the religious head of this, uh, the whore on, on many waters, He's got to look more stout than his fellows. In other words, he's, he's determined, which he represents the devil, he's right, determined right. to do exactly what Yahweh said don't do and right. to teach people the opposite of what yes. Yahweh said. He said unto the fools, don't deal foolishly, and to the rasha, don't lift not up the horn. Uh -huh. Well, when you're celebrating the festival of fools these 12 days before Christmas, you lifting the horn up, and they got all this other stuff connected. They got Hanukkah that I'm not exactly sure where it starts, but it's around this time, the Festival of Fools. They got that other, um, what's that other thing that we were um, asked about? The, uh, um, the black thing. Yeah. Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. Yeah, Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. But then there, there's another one, um, the Winter winter uh, Festival, the Feast of Dedication. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Hanukkah, right. All right, so it's all the festival of fools where right. if you don't get in and study Yahweh's word, right. you will be a fool and you'll be celebrating. Yeah. And then the devil and demons just laughing. Yeah, yeah. So the English word fools is the Hebrew word halal. <coughs> That's H A L A L, found in Blue Letter Bible number 1984. Jesenia's Hebrew Chaldee lexicon defines it meaning to be foolish. In the sacred writers, the more anyone boasts, the more he is regarded okay. as being foolish. Okay. Just as on the other hand, a modest person is looked upon as wise and holy. Okay. Being a fool means to be mad or smitten with fury, to pretend incompetent. Well, they're not pretending, they're just ignorant of Yahweh's truths and don't want to know. That's right. part of Proverbs, the first chapter. So how do you uh, stop becoming a fool and celebrating the festival of fools? Okay. Proverbs 1. And Yahweh lets us know. Yes, he does. It is written. We're going to read one verse, verse 7. Hallelujah. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Huh. So the respect, the reverence of Yahweh right. and what Yahweh said. That's it. How things are and how Hallelujah. Things. He said that's the beginning. Yes, it is. Of Yada, of you knowing something. Right, and, right. And the fools know nothing, but... They conjecture and they think they know a lot of <laughs> yeah. stuff. Yeah. See, yeah. Fools despise yeah. Kokma yeah, and Musa do. instruction. Yeah, they do. Especially when it's the truth and Yahweh is telling them. All right? Let's go to Matthew 17 chapter. So at the festival of fools, the king and queen are elected on the 12th night, which is Epiphany or January 6th, or mm. on the eve of January 5th in France, Belgium, Germany, and England. Who are we talking about? Jacobites, you're right. a fan. That's it. On the eve of the festival, a cake was baked with a bean in it. It was divided into portions, one for each member of the family, and one was for God. Uh -huh. One for the heavenly virgin, and sometimes one for the poor. Uh -huh. The person getting the bean was proclaimed king of the bean. Sometimes a second bean was placed in the cake for election of the queen. In many areas, <coughs> excuse me, the beans used in the cake were taken to be blessed by the clergy. <laughs> Who was blessing them? The Roman Catholic Church. Right. And divination was employed on the 12th night to determine the month of the year in which the price of wheat would be best. In England, sometimes a coin was substituted for the bean in the cake. This custom was in southern Germany the first half of the 16th century. The placing of coins in Christmas pudding stems from this. All right, so now we're in Matthew 17. This is the devil's perversion of Bible right. scripture again. Right. Matthew 17, 
Start at verse 24, please. Hallelujah. And when they were come to <clears throat> Capernaum, they that received tribute, money came to Peter and said, Doubt not, your master pay tribute. All right, so now here they asking Kepha, hey, does your master pay taxes or does he not? Right. All right, uh, skip down to verse 26. Peter said unto him, O stranger, Yahshua said unto him, then, then are the children free. And verse 27. Notwithstanding least, we should offend them. Go thou to the sea, and cast an hook, and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and thee. All right, All right. so he put All right. money in the All fish's right. mouth. Right. Well, they put money in the pudding. Mm -hmm. They put beans <coughs> in the in the in the cake. All right, that's where they got it from. Right, right. All right. So in France, every time the king or queen drank at the festival of fools, the mm. company cried, "The king or queen drinks," and they all did likewise. Okay. <coughs> that's where that saying "Merry Christmas" comes from. Uh. It has to do do with being intoxicated. All, all right. right. Mm -hmm. Uh, under the influence. Right, right. Anyone failing to do so when the king or queen drank had their faces blackened uh -huh. those with the, okay. by corks or soup <coughs> or the leaves of wine. Mm. In some parts of the Ardennes the practice was to fasten horns of paper in the hair <coughs> and put a huge pair of glasses on the nose. Mm. This was worn until the end of the festival. This is the origin of the dunce's cap. So you know that yeah. cone-shaped cap. Uh -huh. The kings and queens place white crosses on the rafters of houses to ban hobgoblins, witches, and bugs. The height of the hemp crop was determined from the height of the king and queen. If the king were taller, the male hemp would be taller, and vice versa. Says the practice of dancing on the roof was to make the hemp grow tall. All right. Let's go to the Christmas tree. Let's go to Jeremiah, the 10th chapter. Again, December 25th is right. involving multiple pagan practices. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Jeremiah 10. It is. <coughs> Christmas tree. Uh -huh. The decorated pine tree comes it. from the worship of the god Addis. Okay. So the pine tree is supposed to be a god too. Okay. All right. Again, the worship of the knowledge of good and evil. Right, right. With trees. Right. The original intent of the decorated pine tree was to maintain the spirit of vegetation throughout the next year. The Phrygians worshiped the pine tree above all trees. Pine resin, and you're talking about uh, uh, Europeans, was burnt at the solstice festivals. The god Attis was chained to the sun symbol on the top of the tree. Okay. So you know they put... Okay. Women supposed to be angels, and they put stars yeah, and all yeah. that stuff that, that represents as God. Said then to angels and other decorations identifiable as the sun, moon, and stars of the Babylonians as Sin, Ishtar, and Shemeth, or Isis, Osiris, and Horus. Right. Those were Egyptian deities. Right. All right, Jeremiah 10. And let's start at verse 1, please. Hallelujah. Hear ye the word. Which Yahweh speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Now who's he talking to? He's uh, talking to us. He's talking uh, to his people. Yeah. He said, Hear me now. Okay. All right. So when I was telling this person about this, and then they're going to call me self righteous. <laughs> See, they're self righteous, and then there's righteous. This is righteous. <laughs> yes. Yahweh's yeah. saying it. Right. All right. Verse 2. Thus saith Yahweh, Learn not the way of the he heathen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are displayed at them. Yeah, they're dismayed at them. Yes, the they are. What do the heathen do? Verse 3. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cru cru a cut tree, it, cut it. Cut it, a tree yeah. out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen 
with the axe. All right, go ahead. They decked it with silver and with gold. They fastened it with nails and with hammers that it moved not. So this is 100%, 200%, 500% Christmas tree, right. Christmas tree. Right. Yahweh said, hear what I'm saying to you, my people. Right, right. Don't learn the way of the heathen. <coughs> Don't be dismayed at the signs of Shemayim, because the heathen are dismayed at them yeah. in the middle of winter. And they figure, okay, the days are getting shorter, so the sun is dying. So we got to do all this stuff to revive the sun and make it come uh -huh. back. And then they pick December 25th because they notice, okay, after December 25th, then it's like the sun starts coming back to life. <laughs> the sun never died. I know, right? right? But Yahweh's telling us, don't learn right, the way of the heathen. Right, right. He said, because these people have some vain customs. They go to the tree, to the forest, and cut the tree out, and they deck it with silver and gold. And then they fashion it, and they're really worshiping it. But the right. devil is behind all of it. Yes, he is. Because <clears throat> when man got cut off to his right from the tree of life, the devil hooked him up to a right to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Well, man chose that right, but now mm -hmm. Yahweh is disconnecting us yes. from that. Hallelujah. So we, we need to let it go. Yes. All right, uh, skip down to verse uh, 8. But they are all together... Brutish and foolish, the stock is a doctrine of vanities. Verse 9. Silver spread into plates is brought from Tarish, and gold from Upas, the work of the workmen, and of the hands of the founder, blue and purple, is their clothing. They are all the work of cunning men. I mean, so they're cunning men, and now they got... Uh... What is this? This these balsam people and they all are so lifelike and it's so yep. they don't have to do anything. Right. Just, but Yahweh is saying they're all together stupid yep. and foolish. The stock is a doctrine of vanities. No profit to it. You're not getting closer to Yahweh by doing it. No. Nope. You're getting further away from him That's by it. doing it. Alright, the lights on the tree. Uh, let's go to Luke 22. The use of lights and candles on the tree goes back to the Aryan religion. Again, who are we talking about? Japhethites, Europeans. Lights were used at the Yule tree ceremony to ward off the gods of thunder, <laughs> storm, and tempest, and to ward off witches. They were lit and tied to the oak tree, which was thought to be sacred. Uh -huh. Again, they worship in trees That's again. right. In Ruthenia and Europe, parts of human anatomy were used as candles. Uh -huh. Wow. Human bones were filled with tallow made from the fat of hanged men. Uh -huh. How gross is that? Sometimes candles were made from the fingers of newborn or unborn children. Uh -huh. In 17th century Europe, robbers murdered pregnant women to extract candles from their wombs. Mm -hmm. The practice of lighting candles takes place on the night before the day of the sun, or December 25th, right, right. as part of sun worshiping. Lighting the Yule tree and the Yule logs. To pagan, the summer and winter solstice were the two great turning points of the year. Lighting bonfires was carried out to ensure the fertility of the crops. And I remember going to school uh, over here in Evanston we would go down to our elementary school and they would have these bonfires. Right. And I yep. forget what it was for, but this must have been what it was for. And we would go down there and watch the fire crackling and stuff and we would always <laughs> wonder, well, what is this, this big fire? What is this about? All right. While it burned, the people danced around the fire singing, good year, come back. Bread and wine, come back. Uh -huh. In Normandy, the fruit trees are fired. Villages competed in the blaze. Bonfires were burned in the Ardennes, in the UK, in England, with 12 fires at the end of 12 lands. There was a 13th larger fire lit in both cases. Oxen were toasted with a cake roasted on the horns of the lead ox. And it says it was the practice of, the explanation of the practice of lighting fires is found in ancient Greece. All right, so let's read Luke, the 22nd uh, chapter. So they set up, <clears throat> in Ireland, they set up sheaves of oats where they held that the 12th night, which is old Christmas Day, is greater than Christmas Day itself. 
They set up 13 candles in the sheaf, 12 smaller and one greater in the center, and attribute these to the apostles in the Last Supper. Luke 22, verse 20. Hallelujah. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood, which is shed for you. All right, so <clears throat> we read last night where he, Yeshua had 12 disciples or apostles. So now they're saying they set up these candles <clears throat> with the larger one in the middle right, right. to represent the Last Supper, right. where Yeshua was changing the symbols from the, the old Zignabari to the Kadashbari. All right, let's go to Psalm 91. So they do this at Christmas, not at Passover, because they do not celebrate the Passover. Thirteen candles are named after each member of the family or relatives to make up 13. They're placed in candles of cow dung and burned to determine the length of each person's life. Psalm 91. So they burn in candles to determine how long you're going to live. <laughs> now we're looking at the truth to find out how long you, you live. 91 and 16. Hallelujah. Who will rise up for me Psalms against... Psalm 91. Oh, 16. Oh, 90. Mm -hmm. oh. With long life will I satisfy him and shrew him my salvation. Yes. I always say with yes. long life, yes. I'm going to yes. satisfy right. him, come on, you or me, mm -hmm. and show us his salvation. Yes, Yeshua. So these fires were lit by the Celts in Ireland, the British, the Gauls, the North Africans in Morocco and the Atlas Mountains on May Day, which was April 30th, and Halloween, November 1st, or it's called All Saints Day. Right, right. Fires were lit on December 25th indoors uh -huh. as part of the ritual uh -huh. instituting the sun god to his place of supremacy in sure. the heavens. Remember, they thought the sun was dying. Yeah, yeah. All right? So then they lit the fire inside on uh -huh. the 25th to help the sun revive. All right, Psalm 97. And verse 1. So, so, so they're, they're instituting the sun into his place of supremacy. Yeah. Well, the literal natural sun is not in a place of supremacy. Nope. Other than Yahweh said he rule, it rules over the day. Yeah, that's it. All right, 97 and 1. Yahweh reigns, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. So Yahweh is a place of supremacy. That's right. All right. You can burn all the fires you want, <laughs> December 25th on through the right. year to December 24th. Wow. wow. All right, so the Yules burnt the Yule log. The log was kept among European groups and placed on the fire to ward off thunder and the effects of storms. Fires were lit on the last day of April at the festival of the burning of witches. This festival is part of the 12 days between December 25th and January 6th. Yeah, I'm going to put it on the very right back. <laughs> 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 